Hey y'all, what's up? So it's your girl Sunray coming at you guys with another video in our Sunray Speak series. All right, so today we're going to be talking about living by faith. So this is our higher series. All right, so the main focus about living by faith. So we know that the word says that the righteous shall live by faith. What does that mean? Well, for one, we know that faith without works is dead. For those of you who don't understand what that means, it's very similar to saying you have faith, but not using that faith. If we study um, Ephesians 6 and we talk about the different armor that we have, the spiritual armor, one of the armors that we have is the shield of faith. And um, in certain translations, it's translated as Paul telling us to hold up our shield of faith. So it's not enough to have your faith and to not actually hold it up. A great representation of this is when the Exodus, the great Exodus, where the Israelites were exiting out of Egypt, right? And when they got to the water and they were surrounded with the enemy and Pharaoh and his troops behind them, the Lord said, why are you complaining to me? Hold up your rod, hold up your staff and separate the sea. So God has been showing me a lot of mirroring in the Bible. And essentially that rod, that staff that Moses held up, that's literally a shield of faith because he held that rod up with faith with knowing that, okay, God, like I trust that you're about to part this Red Sea. Otherwise, we're all about to go in the sea and drown and die. And what was the point of you exiting us out of Egypt? So living by faith is a way to get um, to become higher or to draw in closer or become more intimate with God. Because when you are um, living by faith, it's like you're depending on the source outside of you. You're depending on God. So there have been many times where I have made payments in faith. I don't know how you guys' bank account is set up, but you know how you can have payments come out of your bank account, like a withdrawal. So what I would do is, is I'll be like, God, I'm believing that by the time the bank um, receives the request for this payment from my electric company or something else, Father, I'm believing in faith that that money is going to be there. So when the bank pulls out that money, Father, they're going to be able to use that money to, um, pay the bills, whatever the case may be. And even my journey in moving to Houston, that was a huge act of me living by faith because I did not know anyone here besides the people I went to college with. And even then they live on a whole opposite side of Houston. So it was like, God, like I'm really trusting you. Like I'm literally taking this step forward, just believing in you. I don't have all of the money that I need. I don't have a house that I'm going to. I don't have a car. I don't even have a job, Father, but I'm going to trust you. And believe it or not, as soon as my resources were running out, Father God would send someone to bless me, okay? And this was before I really started firmly on my ministry and YouTube. It would be people in my day-to-day -day life. And another thing I want to talk about is when you live by faith, you have to be open, okay? Because the way in which you want God to move, the way in which you believe God is going to act, nine times out of ten, he's going to act in a way opposite to that. Because we know that the Lord, his thoughts are higher than ours, and so are his ways. So what I've come to do is, is like even now in moments, I'm like, okay, God, I think you're going to do it this way, this way, and this way. So since I think you're going to do it this way, I'm not even going to expect you to do it that way because like the way you're going to do it, I can't even begin to think of it. And then when God does come through, it's in a way that you would have never imagined. Yes, maybe the money still came through your bank account, right? Or maybe the person or maybe someone did show up to bless you, but the way in which it happened, like God's like, hey, I need you to go here. Hey, I need you to say this. I need you to do this. And then suddenly and you're like, wait, God, I wasn't expecting my blessing to come from this act of obedience. I wasn't expecting my blessing to come from this particular person. I knew, God, you blessed me through people, but I didn't know that you laid it on this person's heart to know that I didn't have have any food to eat or to know that I need prayer for deliverance or things of that sort. So again, I pray that you guys are enjoying a higher series and that is just um, bringing you into a new relationship with God and helping you start to learn like, okay, God, like there is a new way. There is another way for me to build my relationship with you and for me to draw closer to you. And a large part of that is just living by faith because it says the righteous shall live by faith. And another thing that I want to say is, is that in Ephesians 6, it tells us to hold up our sheet of, shield of faith against the fiery darts of the enemy. If God tells us that the righteous shall live by faith because we're under the grace covenant and Christ came to restore the original covenant that God gave Abraham, which was a man that led by faith. Why is it? I mean, it shouldn't be too hard for you guys to realize why it is that Satan always attacks your 
faith first. Like he always attacks your faith. You start having, like, as soon as God give you a word, you be so happy. The whole world is just joyous. And then suddenly you start to become attacked. Like, oh yeah, doubt that's not going to happen or fear. Like God, I know you told me you're going to do this for me, but I'm kind of fearful. I'm getting this bill. They're telling me that I have to pay it in three days. And father, I just don't know. Hold up your shield of faith. Stand firm on the word of God. You got to stand in your faith. And what what use is it for us to know the promises of God, for us to know the word of God, if we're not going to be doers? We need to be hearers and doers of the word of God. Hearing means we hear with our spiritual ears. We allow that word to take root within us for it to bear the fruits of the spirit, but also to help us strengthen our faith. Because one thing that the Lord has told me, when you are confident in him, your confidence is your trust in him. It shows that you trust him. And I know there's a scripture in Jeremiah 17 that speaks of that. So again, I hope you guys are enjoying the higher series and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.